I met uh, Juan Carlos in a previous workshop in Florence where we started to investigate that relationship between theatre and the public space. And um, based on that we decided to, to, uh, to take this a step further and doing it here. So I was asked to um, curate or organize uh, this workshop together with uh, some students from from the Norwegian Theatre Academy of the Esfield University College, which I'm, where I'm working, and with some students from Barcelona to bring students together because that uh, different cultures and contexts creates often a good synergy as the starting point. As a simple definition, I would say it, it could be called the, the merging or the amalgamation of theatre and architecture. It's where the two fields come together, not just being a side of each other, but become a unity. And in that sense, I see it as a very open concept in the sense that one could even say that scenography gets to its best point when it totally disappears. Because I see it much more as an inner driving engine to bring things together. I think everything in that regards also other art fields but specifically in scenography and how it relates to theater and architecture is about um, creating an unknown, creating potentials, framing an unknown where things will happen in the future which we don't know yet. And I think this is also the kind of the core of the workshop we're going to engage into. I would rather turn it around because I think for me the best way to understand scenography is by taking, apart, taking it apart and dissolving it. It's, I think, less the, about trying to define and talking about it than by doing it and substantiating it. And in this sense, every contribution, every um, scenographic statement or activation that takes place is co-defining it. So in that sense, it only starts to take shape by taking place in different environments. Well, I think there's one thing that both theatre and architecture, um, I mean, there's many things that they share, but maybe one of the most important things is that they both don't exist without an audience. There's no theatre without an audience. There's no architecture without an audience or people using it. So again, I think the, the, the main thing that we have to do as artists is to create potentials, is not by defining what something should be, but by creating fields of tensions where something else happens that we can't control. And the, the difference, um, maybe a, a difference between architecture and theater, which bring the two together, is the different time horizons that we often tend to, to neglect, especially in contemporary architecture, is, is how time unfolds, how a, a building starts to be alive in the moment its process of decay begins. So the building is finished and gets into life once it it, it can be used by the citizens, by everybody inhabiting it, but that's also the moment when slowly it starts to, it starts to fall apart. And I think that's an, an important aspect that becomes interesting as a, as a, when we take in that momentum of the performative in the theatre into architecture. Well, I think the public... Um, the, the public is the theatre. There is one thing, I mean, the theatre has always been a very important centre or focal point or epicentre in the public space. And this is at the core of the workshop to question this a little bit because we very often now experience that those two points in a way are separate. And we're inquiring in the workshop what, what is, what, looking a little bit more precisely, what are the relationships between the two? And I think a lot of it has to do, the public space is a, is a political space, is a, is, an, is a space dealing with ethics, is a political space. And the theater as such is also a political place. I'm a little concerned about a lot of theater work that try to be political by staging the political on stage while they often might miss the main point, which is actually what happens with society. So I think the theatre becomes political not by what is shown on stage, but what that triggers 
as a dialogue, as a discourse, as a meeting point within the audience. So it's much more political to bring diverse groups of people together to the theater than if the play on stage is expressing very much political ideologies. I would like to teach um, openness and curiosity, which should be there from the very beginning and, and as a really o a radical openness. And I often say to the students, the only two skills they really have to learn in the education is the skill to listen and the skill to collaborate. And it's, I think especially in this workshop, the collaboration, of course, will be key in this fabulous opportunity that uh, scenography students work together with, with musicians, composers work together with architects, work together with chefs. I mean, that already um, creates, um, creates something very important. But maybe the goal of this workshop is to um, foster a form of radical listening. I think everybody's producing so much these days. There's so much being written, there's so much, everybody's commenting on everything, but nobody really listens. So I think the, 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 the key notion maybe for the whole workshop is that a radical listening can be the most political statement that we can do at the moment. So how can listening become a radical political active act? Probably the same. In meeting, in meeting the students uh, from here, bringing together with the students from Norway. Um, it's the same curiosity that drives me always to do these, to do these uh, kind of workshops. Um, to understand, for me it's the same thing with teaching, that it's about creating a potential that I have to, it's, it's always a question how the frame for this potential has to be um, wide enough to really remain open, that we discover things that we could not have imagined before. Um, but it should not be too tight that we already know what's going to happen inside. So, so this is what I'm trying, is just to find this kind of boundary to create the perfect field of tension as a potential inside. And then it's the same thing for me. It's, it's, it's the same, it's, it's the same um, discovery that I'm going into, as I've just been talking about, in terms of seeing a theater performance going out into a public square in the city. Well, I know it a little bit. I was here for this workshop two months ago to explore it. And I got quite fascinated because in a way, it's like almost the third part of a workshop that we had started in Halden, which nobody of you ever heard of, which is a small town in southern uh, Norway, where they have actually the oldest theater in Norway, but it's on the first, it, it, it's like a, a, a hidden living room. And of course, it's the total opposite of the touristic context in Florence. So then we've done it in Florence, and now we're coming here. In Florence, the theater was very much in the city center, in the whole touristic explosion, so to say. And this here is in a very different place. It's, it's, it's very special. So I had to come here because everything always starts from the, the, the place you are. I mean, this is why I think this notion of site-specific is totally redundant because whatever you do, you always have to start from the site. I mean, this is your starting point, even if you work in a theater. So I wanted to come here to kind of understand what it is. And it feels like there's so many, it's almost impossible to, to find an identity about Montjuic and all its history and all its consolidations, its scars, all its structures that it has. So to me, it felt more like a, a huge, sleeping worm or monster that, that also everybody is respects. There's, it's a complex history, it's a complex uh, territory, and everybody has a little bit of a fear of really trying to get it because it, it, it's alive, it has its own 